Hi, I'm Elena Devi, a professor at the Picker Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. A key feature of the mammalian brain is its capacity to adapt in response to experience. It does so by modifying the strength of existing connections as well as by synapse formation and elimination. Excitatory synaptic rearrangements have been monitored in vivo because dendritic spine dynamics essentially represent excitatory synaptic changes. However, lack of a vital marker for inhibitory synapses has precluded their observation. Today, we'd like to tell you about our study, published in Neuron, where we employed a technique that allowed us to visualize inhibitory synapses directly and to simultaneously monitor inhibitory synapse and dendritic spine dynamics across entire arbors of pyramidal neurons. We had several exciting findings, including in vivo evidence that inhibitory synapse and dendritic spine remodeling are spatially clustered and that clustering is influenced by sensory input. Hello, I'm Jerry Chen. I'm a former student in Elena Devi's lab in the Department of Biology at MIT. For our study, we used a Cree-based expression system to sparsely label layer 2-3 pyramidal neurons in mouse visual cortex. We used a plasmid expressing yellow fluorescent protein to label dendritic arbors, and for inhibitory synapses, we generated a construct with teal fluorescent protein fused to jephrin, a postsynaptic scaffolding protein found exclusively at GABAergic and glycinergic synapses. These transgenes were introduced embryonically through in utero -like operation. These mice were later raised to adulthood and then implanted with cranial windows. Labeled neurons of binocular visual cortex were identified using optical intrinsic imaging and then repeatedly imaged using a custom-built two-photon microscope adapted for two-color imaging. At each time point, we acquired a three-dimensional volume stack that encompassed the cell and the majority of its dendritic arbors. We were able to see dendrites bearing spines and teal and puncta expressed across the dendritic shaft and on some dendritic spines. Using serial section and immunoelectron microscopy, we confirmed that all teal and puncta imaged in vivo correspond to inhibitory synapses. Inhibitory synapses on the spines were always paired with an excitatory synapse that contacted the same spine. Looking across the entire neuron, we found that inhibitory synapses on the shaft were uniformly distributed across apical and basal dendrites. Inhibitory spine synapses were half as abundant as shaft synapses, but interestingly were differentially distributed with higher densities along the distal apical dendrites. These different inhibitory synapse types also differed in their dynamics. During normal sensory experience, we found that inhibitory spine synapses were four times as dynamic as inhibitory shaft synapses. An eight-day period of monocular deprivation, known to induce ocular dominance plasticity, produced a rapid and specific loss of inhibitory spine synapses during the first two days of deprivation. We observed a loss in inhibitory shaft synapses that was more modest and persisted throughout the deprivation period. We speculate that changes in inhibitory spine synapses serve to modulate individual excitatory inputs contacting the same spines, while changes in shaft synapses may regulate the levels of dendritic excitability of individual branches. Finally, we found that inhibitory synapse and dendritic spine dynamics were spatially clustered along the arbor at a distance of approximately 10 microns. The frequency of these clustered events also increased during monocular deprivation, demonstrating that this coordinated plasticity is driven by experience. These findings reinforce the notion that synaptic plasticity in the adult brain is a highly orchestrated process. Our ability to resolve changes in individual synapses of different types across the dendritic arbor is crucial in our ability to understand how we learn and adapt to our environment.